In today's episode, political leaders take to radio stations to call for active participation of every citizen. While the killings continues in tens of thousands and bodies of victims are thrown in the Nyabarongo River, United Nations Secretary General Butros Butros Gali proposes the withdrawal of Unamil contingents. <laughs> April 12, 1994, massacres perpetrated against the Tutsi in the former Chigari city, Chibungo, Changugu, Chibuye, Chigaringari, Byumba, and Jitalama prefectures. Froduari Karamira and MDR Power called on all Hutu extremists to exterminate Tutsis. Since 7th April 1994, political and government leaders had started to mobilize citizen support for the genocide. Speaking on Radio Rwanda early in the morning of April 12, MDR power leader Froduari Karamira told his listeners that the war was everyone's responsibility, an idea that would be repeated frequently in the next few weeks. He called upon Hutu not to fight amongst themselves, but rather to assist the armed forces to finish their work. This was a directive to the MDR power supporters to forget the differences with the MRND and CDR and to collaborate with them in tracking the Tutsis. Without this collaboration, advocated by Karamira on Hutu power speech in October 1993, the genocide would have remained limited to strongholds of MRND and CDR. The same day, Radio Rwanda broadcasted a press release from the Minister of Defense, and it denied, open quotes, lies, close quotes, about divisions in the armed forces and among Hutu generally and insisted that, open quotes, soldiers, gendarmes, national police, and all Rwandans have decided to fight their common enemy in unison and all have identified him. The enemy is still the same. He's the one who has always been trying to return the monarch who was overthrown. The Minister of Defense asks Rwandans, soldiers, and gendarmes the following. Citizens are asked to act together, carry out patrols, and fight the enemy." Close quote. On April 12, 1994, the genocidal government left Kigali and settled in Jitarama where it continued to coordinate the extermination of Tutsis in all prefectures. In Kigali, corpses were thrown into dumpsters by prisoners and dumped in trenches dug by machines. On the 12th April 1994, General Dallaire learned from UN military observers that massacres were underway in Jisenyi and Chiwungo. He reports that in Kigali, corpses were thrown into dumpsters by prisoners and dumped in trenches dug by machines. These dumpsters were from the services of bridges and roads of the Minister of Public Works, Minitrap, under the responsibility of Niriva Munda Alphonse, the son-in-law of President Juvenal Habyarimana, who fled to Belgium. The United Nations Secretary General, Boutros Gali, proposes withdrawal of UNAMIR contingents at the beginning of the genocide. In Bonn, Germany, Willy Kleiss, Belgian Minister of Foreign Affairs, told Boutros Boutros Gali, UNAMIR has become useless. UNAMIR is in danger. There is an anti-Belgian climate. He proposed the suspension and withdrawal of UNAMIR. Boutros Gali replied, I share your analysis. Until then, the United Nations has consistently refused to strengthen the mandate of UNAMIR despite relentless appeals from General Dallaire. Boutros Boutros Gali was out of his office in the United States all the while, continuing his travels abroad, despite alarming reports from the UNAMIR reporting several deaths since 7th April 1994. The Tutsi were massacred in Nyawera and Mukaranji, Kayonza. In Nyawera and Mukaranji sectors, Kayonza district, the dates of 11th to 12th April 1994 were marked with extremely cruel killings. The Inerhamgi killed a mother named Mureb Gaire, who was pregnant and they dismembered her with a machete and removed the infant, then burnt them in front of the public. At Mukaranji Catholic Parish, the Tutsi started to take refuge there between April 7th and 9th, 1994, and they were attacked by militiamen and began to defend themselves with stones, bricks, and other means. But the Inerame got the upper hand because they were supported by the gendarmes and the government soldiers. On April 12th, 1994, the local authorities led by Burgmester Senghwa de Celestin, supported by soldiers, gendarmes, and militiamen, carried out an attack on Mukaranje Presbytery to kill the Tutsi. They violently beat the parish priest, Joseph Gattari, who was at the same time the director of the secondary school in Mukaranje. 
He died shortly after. The Hutu Vic of the parish, Munyaneza Jean Bosco, intervened to save his colleagues and the Tutsis they were sheltering. He was shot on the spot, followed by mass extermination. The group of militia in Erami who took part in the killings included all local leaders from all professional sectors, namely Senghwari Celestin, Bourgmestre, Kanyangoga Thomas, businessman, Ngawonzima Augustin, diplomat, and his son, Ngawonzima Jean-Claude, a teacher. Lieutenant Gendarme Tkwahirgwa, Sergeant Sendjumva Edouard, Kaisabekom, a teacher, Nsabimana Elias Chioni, primary school inspector, Simari Kubgabo Elias Simba, teacher, Mutaganzwa, businessman, Gashumba Samson, Konseye Mukaranje, Kanyogo Tensabimana, Konseye Nyagatovu, Rudasingwa, director of Serai Mukaranje, Twishime Joseph, teacher, Serai Mukaranje, Mujenzi, former director of Serai Mukaranje, Gahiji Samuel, teacher, Gafaranga, teacher, Kanyanzira, businessman, Rugwabagabo, brigadier, Rugwaihuku, former soldier, Ndakazainyas, Migabo, a teacher, to mention but a few. Munya Nindi Alphonse, director of Mukaranje Health Center, provided the ambulance of the health center to transport militiamen wherever they went to commit killings. Massacres of Tutsis in Nyabiteche sector, where the former Mukoma sector office was located, Nyamasheche, Changugu. Many Tutsis were killed in Nyabiteche sector at the office of the former Mukoma sector, Mariba. These Tutsis were killed on April 12, 1994, forced to leave their homes to participate in the so-called security meetings to which all Tutsi men were invited. They left at 8 a.m. and asked all women and children to take refuge in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Since April 10, 1994, all families spent their night in this church trying to keep them safe. Men spent their night watching to prevent any attacks to which they would respond while women and children rested. When they arrived at the supposed meeting place, the Tutsi men noticed that there was no meeting but the Inerami armed with traditional weapons were waiting to kill them. The counselor, by the names of Kanyarurembo Joseph, asked them to enter the old sector office where they were locked up, after which the killers wanted to set this office on fire with its occupants, but apparently the petrol in their possession was of poor quality and did not burn. Councillor Kanyarurembo then asked military reservists named Toriro Theodore to throw a grenade in the building. He threw two grenades, after which they opened the doors and killed all Tutsis who wanted to escape and finished off those who were still breathing. More than 400 Tutsi men were massacred. The same day, there were massacres at Karemera Klaviach's place, who lived in Nyabitechiri sector, Nyamashache district, Mukoma cell. Several Tutsis who had taken refuge there were killed by a group of criminals from Pima, who then went to massacre those who had taken refuge in the Adventist church. Massacres of Tutsis ordered by Prefect Bagambichi in Ngoma, Bushecheri sector, Nyamasheche. It was on the main road from Chinini to Ngoma Primary School in Bushecheri sector, Nyamasheche district. During the genocide, there was a roadblock and a stone quarry of over 15 meters deep. The Tutsis of this sector, currently near Usanje cell, were all gathered and brought in Mujina to be killed after the prefect Bagambichi Emmanuel went around Changugu asking the Hutus to start killings. From 12th to 18th April 1994, those who had come from Goma sector, especially from Keshero cell, which was inhabited by many Tutsis, were surrounded and taken to a nearby roadblock where they were immediately killed. Among the Inherami responsible for the massacres are Mazera, Daishimi Emmanuel, Bazambaza, and others. The Tutsis perished in excruciating pain. Men had their genitals and their arms cut with machetes. Some of them were inoculated. Women were fast raped while their young children were taken from their mothers to be thrown alive in peace. Night and day, screams and wailings of these children could be heard. The Bugumest Furer Abel of Kamil Guamatamu kills Tutsis in Guamatamu. Jihombo sector, Chibuye. The former Guamatamu commune in Chibuye prefecture is one of the communes which were populated by many Tutsis who owned a lot of property. Since 1959, during the attacks, Tutsis in the region had taken refuge in parishes and the commune office and had survived. However, their cattle were taken by the torturers, their property looted and most of their houses burned down. In 1994, this commune was led by Burgumese Furer Abel. On April 12th, 1994, 
A meeting was held at Guamatamu commune, which began at 10 a.m. and ended at 1 p.m. The councillors, Hutu agents from the commune, important Hutu traders and leaders of Inerangwe militia participated. At the end of the meeting, the councillors went to assure Tutsi refugees by telling them that peace has returned and that they could therefore return home. But some time afterwards, Tutsis who had taken refuge at Shivingo Parish were killed. A vehicle carrying soldiers and Inerangwe arrived at the commune. They were led by Ruzindana Obed, an important businessman in Mugonero. He had taken care to sabotage the telephone line of the commune so that Tutsis could not call for help or warn the international community which would thus learn what was happening. Shots were heard for a long time. On April 12, 1994, despite their resistance, more than 250 Tutsis were killed including those who are in the commune and many children and women who are taken refuge in the church. Ruzindana Obed was found guilty of genocide and sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. From April 7th to 12th April 1994, the killers who massacred Tutsis were led by Kaishema André, a teacher, Naganzgwa Charles, Ruhumuriza Celestin, former soldier, Ruzindana Obed, reservist Dicheri, Inherhamwe Murego, and Murguana Shaka. But on April 12, 1994, other Inherahamwe joined the killers, including Chibati Jean Paul, reservist Nsonera Christophe, Bimenyimana, and many, many others. Tutsis were massacred in Wiharabuje, Rugarika, in Kamonyi district. In Wiharabuje village of Chigarama, Sherisel, Rugarika sector, Kamonyi district, a large number of Tutsis were massacred in a plot which began on April 7, 1994, under the responsibility of Rugumest of Runda commune, Ndayambaje Sixbat, as well as other notables like Klavier Kamana, who was a successful entrepreneur. The militiamen who carried out the massacres were driven in traders' vehicles, in particular that of Sharangabo, who was a businessman in Rugarika. After having gathered the Tutsis in Uharabuje and making sure that they were all present, the militiamen started to execute them with traditional weapons clubs, stones, machetes, whores, swords, and many more. The carnage started on April 12, 1994 at around 1 p.m. and continued until the early evening around 7 p.m. More than 1,000 Tutsis perished that day. After the massacres, they took their clothes off and a vehicle loaded all the bodies, including those who were still alive, to throw them into a pond which was serving as a watering place for cows, called Chabariza. Responsible for the massacres were Burgumest Ndayambaje Sixbat of Runda Commune, Assistant Burgumest Habjarimana Vivien, a teacher Uimana Pelage, businessman Kamana Claver, Joseph C. Tiba, and other Inherahamwe. Most Tutsis from Runda were thrown into the Nyabarongo River. On April 12, 1994, a large number of Tutsis took refuge in the premises of Chijese Health Center. They were taken out en masse to the Nyabarongo River using several usual paths leading there and they were killed and dumped there. The best known site on the Nyabarongo River where the Tutsis were rounded up before being thrown into the river is Ruramba. These killings were always preceded by atrocious humiliation causing physical and mental degradation to the victims. The militia, mad men, old people, women, children walk for very long hours along the Nyabarongo River undress them and threw them one by one into the Nyabarongo River on the arduous journey till the last Tutsi. Along the way, they were beaten, shouted at and insulted. Some were drowned alive, stoned, and others were cut out on the banks of the river and thrown into the river in pieces. The massacres of Tutsis from Kabuga, Bumbogo sector, Gasabo. From 10th to 11th April 1994, Tutsis who lived in different corners of Bumbogo sector were being killed. At Kabuga Kanyavichenye, where Karama sector office was located, over 4,500 Tutsis perished. Those who were killed had come from Wumbogo, Kanombe, Musave, Chimirongo, and Ndera between April 10th and 11th, 1994, and they had been told that they would be protected. From April 12th, 1994, Tutsis from Huzuzu and Jishaka joined. At nightfall, the attack began and was led by a gendarme called Emmanuel who brought a bag of grenades on a motorcycle. Then a van driven by a certain militia today arrived filled with killers armed with machetes. 
The latter had just come from Jishaka Church, where they had just murdered Tutsis who had sought refuge there. The massacre started on the evening of April 12th and ended in the morning of April 13th, 1994. Renowned killers in the area included Mutaganira, Muyochi Ogiste, Karangwa Teofil, Guabutogo, and many, many others. The massacres of Tutsis from Musenyi in Bujesera and Muhura in Gatsibo. Bujesera is known in the history of Rwanda to be a zone of containment, exclusion, and massacres of Tutsis. In 1994, there was no exception. After the news of President Habjarimana's death broke out, the houses of Tutsi notables in Musenyi were attacked and burnt. The responsible of Musenyi cell, Karangwa, appealed to Tutsis from the neighborhood to take refuge in his home. But it was with this very deliberate intention of regrouping them there to be able to kill them massively. Karangwa had made plans on how to kill them. He called the killers to his home. On April 12, 1994, the attack was carried out and more than 500 Tutsis perished in Karangwa's home. Few of the Tutsis who remained in Kagusa began to flee to Nyamata, but several were killed on the way. On the same date, Nearly 80 kilometers from Musenyi, precisely in Rugwarenga cell, Remera sector, Muhura commune, Byumba prefecture, Burgumest and Aishimi was leading the massacres of Tutsi residents of the commune. After the genocide, there were 252 bodies of Tutsis killed who had been thrown into a mass grave. A memorial is erected today at the site of the massacres. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of Kwibuka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review, sharing what you like about the podcast, and share with others who would be interested in listening.